Hello, everybody. How are you doing out there? I wanted to jump on here and do a little follow-up video. Actually, I'm going to do a few follow-up videos from the podcast that I did last week over on the NATV Podcast Network. I did that with Paxton, Paxton and Crystal Nicole Black. We had a great time. One of the main things we talked about was the narcissist smear campaign. So today's video, I'm going to take a little bit deeper dive into what a smear campaign is, what tactics nar narcissists use in their smear campaign, and what you can do. How do you handle the smear campaign? So first of all, what is a smear campaign? It's defined as a form of psychological manipulation and abuse used by narcissists to discredit, devalue, and ultimately destroy someone's reputation. And it typically inclu includes false accusations, malicious gossip, and rumor spreading. So when you part ways with a narcissist, they do not go gentle into that good night. They will do anything and everything to paint you as the villain, as the cause for the, the rupture or the, you know, the dissolution of that relationship. And I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, unfortunately, narcissists, as we know, are master manipulators. So they are very convincing in this smear campaign typically. And chances are, if you were in a relationship with a narcissist, you weren't very vocal about their behavior. You kept those things kind of hidden and secret, sometimes out of shame, um, oftentimes out of shame. Sometimes you just are made to feel like they are validated in what they're doing, so you don't share what's happening behind closed doors. There's a number of reasons you haven't told other people about it. So narcissists have a great jumping off point to start their smear campaign. Basically, it's kind of a level playing field in a lot of cases where there hasn't been a lot of negative things said about them. So I know my personal experience, uh, this was about 10 years ago, I hadn't ever heard about a smear campaign. When I parted ways with my ex, I honestly didn't know what was coming. I was breathing a sigh of relief. I had wanted to get out of that situation for a long time. And once I finally was able to break free, I was like, Whew, uh, thank you. I'm out of this horrible situation. Things are going to get better. And I felt like I had a fresh start. And little did I know things were about to get a whole lot worse. And looking back, I really wish someone would have prepared me for what was coming and given me some advice and education around how to handle that whole situation. So that's what I'm going to do today, but a little bit more on just my personal story and how the smear campaign played out. So we know narcissists, they have different approaches to how they abuse people. They can be very covert about it, very secretive. It can be very subtle, or they can be very overt where it's in your face, playing out right in front of you. And I can say that I experienced both of those things. So throughout my marriage, one of the main themes or kind of issues that he continued to try to create in our relationship was infidelity. So I would be constantly accused of having an affair, or being interested in other men I worked with, which was completely not the case. But I know when we did separate that, that was the reason that he gave people who were close to him, mutual friends of ours, as the reason why we separated, that I was cheating, having an affair, um, things that were completely false. And I didn't find out about those things till many, many years down the road. The part of the smear campaign that was very overt in my face was what played out in the courtroom when we had our divorce. We went through the divorce process. We had children together. And the way I was painted in that situation was as a very career-driven person who didn't care about the kids, who wasn't there for my kids, um, which also was just completely not the case. Um, I was the main breadwinner in the relationship, so naturally I did spend a little bit more time at the office. I spent more time at work because I was kind of under that pressure of keeping, keeping the salary, keeping, you know, our standard of living, all of those things that um, you have to do when you are fully employed and the main breadwinner of the family. Um, but 
he used um, that as an angle, again, to paint me as a, a bad mom or an uninvolved mom as we went through the divorce process. So it's super hurtful um, when these things do come out, especially when you've endured abuse in the relationship, because you know, logically it shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't be the one getting hurt in the relationship and then afterwards be disparaged, be discredited, be again, drugged through the mud. Um, it just feels that much more hurtful when you know you've already been through so much. So if you're going through this, I feel for you. Um, it's incredibly painful, but I'm going to give you some tips on how to handle it. So hopefully the duration of it is as short as possible. So first of all, what motivates the narcissist to do the smear campaign? Number one is to protect their image. We know that narcissist self-image completely depends on how they believe other people see them. Internally, they're really very insecure. They have very little self-worth. So they get that from how they think people view them. And they always want to try to maintain the best image possible so that they feel good about themselves because internally they cannot do that themselves. So when a breakup happens or you, and you go no contact with the narcissist or family member, you know, if it's a relationship, intimate partner or a family member or friend, they see that dissolution of the relationship as a failure. And failures pose a threat to the narcissist because, again, they believe their success and failure all dictates how people see them, how they perceive them, and they want to protect their image at any cost. And that means making you look like the bad guy or the cause of the failure in the relationship, and that's what drives their smear campaign. And by painting a bad picture or a bad picture of you, they're driving attention away or diverting attention away from their own bad behavior. And then they're able to be viewed as the victim. So number one is protecting their image. Number two, winning. Narcissists want to win. They always want to win. Uh, again, to maintain that grandiose exterior at any cost. And they're going to use harassment and intimidation to win and get what they want. And oftentimes they do these things, they want to win, and they don't even truly want the outcome. They just want to win. So in the case of child custody, sometimes narcissists will, they will go to great lengths to try to get equal custody or more custody when truly deep down they don't want that additional time with the kids. They just want to win. Number three is control. You know, when you were in the relationship that the narcissist wanted to have power and control all the time. It's no different when you part ways with the narcissist. So if they can control your emotions, they can get reactions out of you. It's just another way of having that and maintaining that power of control, power and control within the relationship. You are literally their puppet on a string. Number four is isolation. That's another driver for the narcissist. They don't want to see their partner supported. They didn't want to see you supported in the relationship either. Oftentimes that's a, a big part of the abuse is they discourage you to have outside relationships. They make it difficult for you to have relationships, whether that's with family or friends or at work. Um, so they will do things to isolate you. And again, that's no different when you leave the relationship. They know if they can tarnish your name, tarnish your reputation, people may turn their back on you, they may believe them. And again, that's just another way for the narcissist to control what's happening. So those are some, some main motivators for the narcissist. Um, next, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to deal with the smear campaign. My biggest piece of advice is to not engage or engage as little as possible with the narcissist when they do their smear campaign. It's completely normal to want to set the record straight. And sometimes if you're having a legal battle or most of the time when you're having a legal battle, you have to defend yourself. Um, or if you're being publicly defamed, you may need to defend yourself. Um, but just remember that narcissists thrive on getting a reaction out of you. You have been their, their source of supply, and they want to keep you as their source of supply. So anytime they see you have a reaction, 
Um, they know that, again, they're still controlling you and it's just further fueling their supply tank. Um, they're going to continue to pick at your most vulnerable parts. So again, that reaction just gives them fuel to keep going. Um, if they can see that you're not phased, eventually they're going to have to turn their attention elsewhere and get a new source of supply. So that's why it's so important that you give them as little reaction as possible. If you do feel compelled to respond, keep it really brief, keep it very boring, and just say something like, that's not true, that's false, and just move on. Or have communications directed. If you're in a legal battle of some sort, have the communication come from your attorney so that you don't have to engage in that. Um, reminders, again, you're never going to win the argument with the narcissist and you're going to end up just going around and around in circles with them. If you do react or try to defend yourself, you're going to exhaust yourself emotionally and mentally trying to do that. That's something that I wish I would have known um, back when I was going through my divorce is that giving the response only aggravated my nervous system activated parts in my brain that I, you know, didn't need to be activated. And all of that causes long-term damage on your nervous system, on your brain. Fortunately, you can, you can repair that, but the more that you're entrenched in this, this messy cycle and what's happening in the smear campaign, the more that it will affect you and it will affect you long-term. So for your own personal health, do not engage. When you do react, if you blow up or have an emotional reaction, narcissists are just going to use that as proof of your instability or accuse you of being the abuser when you do react. So another reason to not engage or react. Um, take the high road, don't stoop to their level, and eventually it will taper off. Remain calm, rely on your support people through this process. When the smear campaign happens, naturally you're going to lose friends. If this is a family member who's narcissistic and you have to go no contact, you may lose family members permanently or for a period of time. It's very unfortunate, but it is part of the reality. And through that process, the, the positive thing is you're really going to learn who your, your people are, who, are, who is going to be there to support you and come by your side and not not believe the things that the narcissist is saying. So while it's a really painful process that can be a positive outcome is really truly knowing who is by your side. So my second tip there is to lean on your support people and don't engage with flying monkeys. So you'll figure out who are safe for you. Um, in the smear campaign, narcissists often involve their flying monkeys or people who will kind of report back to them how you're reacting, what you're saying, um, and you will you will figure those things out. And you, in addition to the narcissist, you have to make sure you're not giving them a reaction and you are cutting off contact with them as well. Number three, practice self-care. Um, this is a very, very challenging time. You need support. Um, you need to, to take good care of yourself. Make sure you're getting plenty of sleep, eating well. Um, enlist a therapist, a coach, a counselor um, to help you through this time too. You need people you can talk to and who you can turn to. And my last um, piece of advice is just to stand firmly in your truth. Narcissists can be so convincing in their smear campaign that sometimes we end up believing it ourselves. It's no different than when you were in the relationship with them. You know, they would call you names. They would um, say hurtful things to you. And sometimes we hear it enough that we start believing in ourselves. So take some time to remind yourself of what the reality is. Um, and also that at the end of the day, the only person's opinion that matters in life is yours and how you view yourself. And I know it can be difficult sometimes to, to stand in that and, and not get thrown off by what the narcissist is doing, but, you know, what matters is what you think of you. So that's a little bit more, again, about smear campaign. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, if there's anything you don't agree with, or any other tips that you may have from your own experiences. 
Um, if you are looking for support and you, you know, you've left somebody who's narcissistic or you've cut out a narcissistic family member in your life or friend, um, I'm here and I would love to be that support person for you. I'll leave some information in the comments or in the notes for the show of how you could get a hold of me. I do free discovery calls. So talking to me the first time, obviously there's no risk to you. We can chat, see if we'd be a good fit for each other. Um, and maybe have some breakthroughs in what you've got going on. So I would love to support you again and be that person if you're looking for somebody. So if you have any questions, let me know too. And I look forward to giving you more information on the show from last week. I've got a couple other topics that came up. Um, one of those is narcissistic family systems. So I plan on doing a video on that here very soon. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks, guys.